We're happy to see you guys. Uh, it is crazy to think that 2018 is over, right? My, how time flies. And uh, we're on the cusp of a new year. I'm not sure what is on the outlook on your calendar, but I got to tell you, Christy and I are, are looking a bit forward to a little bit more of a calm year as we move into the, the, the new year. After 24 months of boys moving literally across the country, the opposite ends of the country from one another, uh, moving another kid into the college, a couple weddings, the early onset of empty nesterness for us. It's been incredible. And you want to talk about incredible changes. 24 months, it's been crazy. And uh, we now have a couple daughters-in-law that we didn't have. Uh, we have grand dogs, <laughs> not grand babies, all right? And thank goodness for slivers of time for rest and renewal. And since we're embarking on a new year, and the big focus of this new year for most people is the is New Year's resolutions and starting over and a fresh, clean slate as we turn the calendar page, today what I want to do is grab your outlines because I want to talk about renewal. Uh, today, as we are closing out our holiday series, we've been talking about if you've been with us, all of the things that we feel during the holiday season. You know, we feel things like joy and, and peace and generosity and nostalgia. And as this month closes out and as this year closes out, let's today spend some time talking about renewal. Let's talk about it. Not only because it's pretty fresh in our mind and it's very uh, fresh as the focus as this season wanes down. But let's talk about renewal today because it's truly, I believe, one of the foundational tenets of the gospel. You may know what I mean. Hopefully you know what I mean, right? I mean, the Bible talks a lot about transformation, doesn't it? The Bible talks a lot about renewal. The Bible talks a lot about letting God change you into the person that he wants you to be, maybe even into the person that you want to be. Let's talk about this. Uh, because letting the power of God change us and, and transform us and make us different, the renewing of our minds will change every other aspect of our lives. Are you with me so far? The renewing of our mind will change the way we live with people. The renewing of our mind will change the way we serve people. The renewing of our mind will change the way that we love people and the way that we think. New Year's time resolutions renewal is a good thing. It's a good thing because it can help us move from where we are to where God wants us to be. And so this final sermon in 2018 is meant to set up the new year. Let's start the new year with a transformed and renewed mind. Is everybody good with that? Yeah, so stay with me here. Let's together turn the page of 2018 and let's kick off this new year uh, to be the absolute best year that we have ever lived. So grab your Bibles, if you will, and I want you to turn with me today to the book of Romans. I want you to flip with me over to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 2, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 12, and verse 2 is what I want to look at today, all right? Romans chapter 12, and verse 2. And a lot of times we, we have a whole big passage of Scripture, but today we're going to look at one verse, all right? And I'm going to give you several other verses for you to write down, but we're going to spend time with this one verse today. And when you find it in your Bibles, I want you to go ahead and underline it, circle it, put an asterisk next to it or whatever, because I really think this would be a great verse for all of us uh, to, to memorize. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start, we're going to end this year, 2018, with this verse. And we're going to start 2019 with this verse. And so here's what I'm going to ask you to do, because I want you to stay awake. I want you to stand with me, all right? Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. All right? And will you read this verse with me out loud? You guys ready for this? Let's read it together. Ready? Here we go. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you 
uh, for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in your house. We thank you uh, for the season that uh, we are all have gone through and, and the blessing that the last couple of weeks and, and, and days have been. God, I want to say as we begin this new year in just a couple of hours that, Lord Jesus, we can say, first of all, thank you for what we have had in 2018. And I just know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there have been people in this room that 2018 has been a really tough year. I mean, a really difficult year. A lot of heartache, a lot of turmoil, a lot of, a, a lot of restlessness, a lot of hopelessness, a lot of a toil, a lot of challenges and difficulties that people have faced. But God, it's obvious if they're here today that you're still sovereign over that because they're here. They've not been defeated. They've not been overwhelmed. They've not been overcome. And God, often it's because of your power. And so we say thank you. Thank you for the good days. Thank you for the good things that happened. Thank you for the good, wonderful, joyful things that took place in 2018. And yet we also say thank you for the challenges that we face because we know, God, your word tells us that those challenges make us stronger and better and they, they help us to persevere. Amen. So Lord Jesus, thank you for 2018. Thank you for carrying us through so many days. You carried us when we couldn't carry ourselves. In the very same way, God, in the same vein, we, we, we welcome 2019. We say thank you for the, the opportunity that we have to be with you in 2019. And so God, will you just set us up, help us to have renewed minds. And as we move into this new year, Lord Jesus, may we become the men and women, boys and girls, that you want us to become. May we put our faith and trust in you as we live every day, not on our own power, not for our own glory, but God, for your power and your glory as we live for you. Bless this new year. In your name we pray. And the church says, amen. amen. Please be seated, if you will. Now, as we talk about renewal and change, I think all of us would probably say that we would like to make some changes in our life, right? Wouldn't y'all want to make some changes? I mean, suppose, let me just say this. Suppose you could change anything about yourself. Where would you start? If you could change anything about yourself, where would you start? Most of us would probably say that we would start on the outside. Amen? Right? I mean, would you, would you be skinnier or taller or shorter or better looking? What would you change? Would you change your eyes, your hair, your teeth, your bulges, your double chins, right? Your leg, what would you change? If you could may wave a magic wand and change your outward appearance, would it be a light touch-up or would it be an extreme makeover? All right? What would you change? Would we even recognize you? Listen, you listen, we all go, I think we all go through periods and times in our lives where we desperately want to change our outward appearance. It's true. Teenagers, they live in a state of constant fear that they don't look good enough. They don't fit in with the crowd by what they have. And so they're constantly tinkering with things and they would try that and they'll experiment with this look and they'll experiment with this fad and with this fashion. Uh, they'll wear this t-shirt or this hat or whatever the latest hottest artist or athlete is wearing, whatever they happen to be wearing. But when we grow older, we get smarter, right? Or do we? I mean, even as adults, what do we do? We spend hours upon hours trying to find just the right dress or just the right shirt or just the right pair of pants that make us look a little thinner and make us fit in with the crowd that we're trying to impress. And we obsess and overly obsess over diets and working out, which is probably a really good thing, but, but it can be a losing battle, right? Because after we lose the weight and we finally look good, then sometimes that weight starts creeping back into our life, right? Finally, you reach the stage in your life where, where, let's be honest, it just gets a little bit easier just to try to hide it up under some clothes, right? Y'all with me? You know I'm talking, and sometimes, sometimes it even gets to the point where, in extreme cases, you may give up altogether and stop caring about how you look. But even as hard as it is to change on the outside, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it seems infinitely harder to change on the inside. If there's anything that we know about human nature, it is that people change very slowly if they change at all. 
think about the struggles of your own life. If you could change things going on inside of you, what would you change? If you could change all of those things inside of you, what would you change? Let me just go down a whole list, and I'm probably going to strike some of you pretty pretty heavily here. Would it be, would you change the inside of you? Would it change, would you change an impatient spirit? Would you change a critical tongue? Would you change being so envious of the people around you or a spirit of discontentment? Would you change this idea of this lingering anger and resentment that you have in your life? Would you change this uncontrollable sexual temptation or financial mismanagement? Would it, would it be a guilty conscience? Would it be a tendency to look down on others? Would it be pride and arrogance? Would it be prejudice towards other? Would it be that you'd love to change your quick temper? Maybe you'd love to change the fact that, that you are profoundly discouraged every single day. And people, if they only knew that, it's, that it takes every, almost every ounce of energy that you have to even force yourself to get out of bed every single morning, would it be an inability to appreciate life? What about an ungrateful spirit? Maybe a disorganized life. Or would you change the inability to say no in your life? Would it be a mean streak that you can't seem to get rid of? You see, we all want, we all, all of us, we all want to change something, but we don't know how to do it, and we don't know where to begin. We all dream of, of, of being something different and better than the person that we are today. We all want that, am I right? And advertisers know that we want that. That's why you can look at your email and, and your social media box is full all the time. It's crammed with promising ads that, that, that you can lose weight right now and you can make money overnight and you can learn a new language in three days and you can become a better lover. You've received ads like that, right? Have you ever see, received an ad that say, watch unwanted pounds simply melt away? <laughs> you ever gotten one of those ads? I think, man, I, that would be so cool to experience that, right? I mean, just eat this supplement, you know, 19 times a day or drink this super fabulous diet shake or whatever, and you just simply watch the pounds melt away. And I just want to stand up there and just watch that happen, you know? But my double chin doesn't always let me look down the way I want to, okay? I would just love for those pounds to just melt away and it just be that easy. Have you ever gotten those emails from, you know, you got, I have not, it's been a while since I've gotten one, but I, sometimes I get those emails telling me that the widow of the former president of Nigeria or Cameroon or somewhere wants me to help her get $4 million out of the bank that's locked up. And she will gladly split the money with me, give me $2 million if I'll just send her my personal bank account information. Have you gotten one of those before? I mean, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? I mean, in so many levels, it would be awesome. Helping a poor widow, you know, making $2 million for myself. Think about what I could do with $2 million. But it's change, and change, change is hard. It's really hard. That's why we, a lot of times, a lot of days, a lot of hours, we spend time watching Dr. Phil and, and Dr. Oz. And you can go to any bookstore, and you'll see an entire huge wall of self-help books. Why? Helping people change is big business nowadays. But when we wake up in the morning and we look in the mirror, what do we see? Often we see the same old person looking back at us a day older, sometimes deeper in debt. And so we figure out whatever we can to try to make some changes in our life, whatever kind of change it might be. You know, we, we, we move, we change jobs, we, we get a facelift, we buy a car, we start a new career. Some people get a divorce, they find a new boyfriend, they go to a new church, they join a chess club, they, they start working out, they buy a new outfit, and on and on and on it goes. And it's not as if all of those things are really bad in and of themselves. Sometimes we need to make some changes, right? Sometimes we really do. But listen, it's not the outward stuff that trips us up. Often it's the change that we need to make on the inside that messes us up. Am I right? Well, how do you do that? How do we make those changes on the inside? Well, let me, let me, let me just answer this question for you. Romans chapter 12, look at your Bibles again. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 tells us that we can be transformed when our minds are renewed. How do we do that? How does that happen? Well, here's how it happens. We must be transfigured where? On the inside. 
We must be transfigured on the inside. Now, I want you to notice, even though we read that scripture, I want you to notice, all right, uh, that, that, that I use the word, what? I use the word transfigured here, right? The, the Greek word for transformed is Rome, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 is related to this idea of this word named, called metamorphosis. You've heard this word before, right? In fact, some of you, for, you know, think back a long time ago. Some, time of you, some of you won't be too bad, but others of you, it's a lo- seventh grade science class, long time ago, all right? Transport yourself back to seventh grade science class. We, I, we learn that this idea of metamorphosis is the process by which a caterpillar becomes a butterfly and a tadpole becomes a frog. Are you with me? Yeah. It's a gradual change on the inside that produces a total transformation on the outside. I use the word transfigure because this is the same Greek word that is used for the transfiguration of Christ when the true glory of Christ began to shine through his humanity. Mark chapter 9 where it says, He was transfigured before them and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as as no one on earth could bleach them. I think that's interesting because what was taking place on the inside for God was altering what his outside looked like. The word means to be changed. It means to be transformed from one thing to another. Think of it this way. When Jesus was transfigured, listen, he did not cease to become Jesus. He didn't cease to be Jesus. He was still who he was just minutes before. But for a brief time, the curtain was pulled back, so to speak, And James and Peter and John saw as much of the true divinity of Christ as many men can see and still live. And in that moment, they saw the real Jesus, the true Son of God from heaven. He didn't cease to be a man, but his true identity was revealed to them as the true God. He was transfigured, you see. Now hold on to that thought, and let's move to the next thing. Let's, let's add to it what happens when a caterpillar enters the cocoon only to emerge later on as a butterfly, right? It's not as if the caterpillar changes its basic nature. Metamorphosis simply reveals, it reveals what was already there in the gene of the caterpillar. Caterpillars can't fly, but guess what? They were born to fly. Well, how do you solve this mystery? How do you solve this conundrum? Well, it's called metamorphosis. When the caterpillar has been changed into a butterfly, it becomes what God always intended it to be. Well, hold on to that thought and let's add one more to it. All right, you guys with me so far? You're hanging on to all these things? All right, tadpoles, they become what? They become frogs. They don't become butterflies. Only caterpillars become butterflies. Listen, write this down. Metamorphosis reveals the essence of a thing. Metamorphosis reveals the essence of a thing. It does not change the essential essence, you see. Caterpillars can't hop like frogs. Tadpoles will never soar like butterflies. Metamorphosis reveals the essential character of whatever was put there by the Creator in the beginning. And so now, with that idea in our brain, let's, let's apply that to ourselves, okay? Right? You st- are you still with me here? Yes. Still with me? Yes. yes. I, first service, I said, are you still with me? And like three people over here were like, yeah. <laughs> and I said, are, 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 are you, am I losing you? And they were like, and I'm like, well, what is it? You know, are you with me or am I losing you here? Okay? I want you to stay with me, all right? When we come to Christ, the Bible tells us, we have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 tells us that. Look at how it reads in this verse. It says, Who has known the mind of the Lord so, to has, uh, so as to instruct him? But we have, what? We have the mind of Christ. That's an amazing thought. Well, that, that we who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have the mind of Christ within us. But before we move on, let's consider one other verse, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, if you're writing these verses down. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Listen, outside of the accounts of Christ's transfiguration, which we just read, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which we just read, this is the only other place in the New Testament where this particular Greek word is used, transfigure. It says this, 
And we, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of God, are being transformed, same Greek word, we're being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. See that? No, we are being, what? We are being transformed, we are being transfigured into the image of Christ. And so, listen, within the waning last couple hours of 2018, listen, we can be renewed, we can be transformed, we can be transfigured into the image of Christ. Why? Because we already, if you're a follower of Christ, you've already got the mind of Christ in you, right? And so what that means is if the mind of Christ is there, we can let him change the inside and we can become what God is calling us to become. And so I think you can look forward to the, to the first couple of days of the new year, complete with a new slate. We can be renewed and transformed into the image of Christ every single day. And it can be January 2nd or April 10th or August the 12th or whatever day of the year. We can be constantly be working at renewing our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We all want that, right? Don't y'all want that? I mean, seriously, are, are you just happy where you are right now in every aspect? I think all of us would say we are not where we want to be spiritually. And we are not where we want to be financially. And we are not where we want to be emotionally. And I'm not where I want to be physically, right? There, there's so much that I want to change about me. And it doesn't mean that I don't like me. But, but there's so much that I want to change about me. And I know that I can do that. And just like the caterpillar and the tadpole, they are essentially what God made them to be. They just have to go through this transforming process to complete who they are. And folks, so do we. So do we. And as, and as they probably think it's never going to happen, so sometimes we feel that way. And as they surely, you know, experience some pain, you can't tell me that that little caterpillar who goes into the cocoon to become a butterfly, you can't tell me there's not a little bit of pain involved in that. All right? And the same thing happens when we go through this stuff in our life. It's this process, and we can be renewed. So, so how can we be renewed? How can we be renewed? Well, without a doubt, I could spend a year talking about that. In fact, I could, I could spend 52 weeks of sermons on being transformed and being renewed and being what God calls us to be. But listen, this is a one-shot sermon, all right? One-shot sermon. So I'm just going to lay a foundational coding for you to think about. And I don't want you to look at this as this simplistic thing or easily done because it's not. Becoming what God wants you to be, it takes a lot of work, doesn't it? It takes a lot of persistence and patience. But let me give you a little formula uh, for both uh, you know, spiritually and practically on being renewed and transformed, okay? So first of all, let me just kind of give you some, some encouragement uh, from a spiritual perspective and then, and then a practical perspective, all right? First of all, spiritual. The late Dr. Uh, Charles Ryrie was an American... Uh, a Bible scholar. He was a Christian theologian. He served uh, for years as, as a professor of systematic theology. He was the dean of doctoral studies at Dallas Theological Seminary. I tell you all that stuff because I just want you to know this guy's really a sharp dude, okay? He was really with it, all right? Really smart guy. He did a lot of teaching on this idea of renewal, a lot of teaching on this idea of transformation. And in his teaching, he would often, listen, he would often use this little equation to talk about this idea. And here's what he'd do. On this board, here's what he would write. He would stand up there in front of the group or the people, and he would write this. Put this up there, Patrick. Next slide. He would write down T plus HH equals SG. T plus HH equals SG. What does that stand for? Here's what he said. You want to be renewed. You want to be transformed. You want the renewing of your mind. First of all, it's going to take time. Okay? And you have to add to the time and the patience through that. Yeah, it's going to take you developing habits of holiness. Time plus habits of holiness equals spiritual growth. He said the transformation of the mind takes time and it takes determination to develop those habits of holiness which will lead to spiritual growth. And please tell me, my friends at Westbrook, this is not the first time you've heard us talk about this, right? Developing habits of holiness. Please, please say this is not the first time. 
Okay? Because we talk about it all the time, right? A, a marker of a spiritual developed follower of Christ is you're going ha- to have practices. You're going to develop rhythmic spiritual discipline in your life so that you can become like God. Time plus habits of holiness so that you can be more like God. I think this is a great equation. But if there's anything I could add to it, I would, I would just add this. T plus HH plus GE equals SG. What does GE stand for? Write this down. GE stands for godly encouragement. Godly encouragement. I doubt that anybody will grow without being around others who can encourage you to help you make wise choices on a daily basis. And for all of us, what that's probably going to mean is that you're going to be a member of a local congregation. And you're not going to come to church just once every six weeks or on Christmas and Easter, okay? Or on Christmas Eve. Were you all here the first service of Christmas Eve? There was like a kajillion people here. Like we had people in the lobby, all right? All right? But you can turn the camera off if you don't have to. I'm just kidding. They're not here today. They're here on Christmas Eve, but they're not here today. And so I want to encourage them on TV and on video, all right? And I want to encourage you to make this a part of your regular journey through life. You need to be in the local congregation for all of us. You need to be in some kind of a ministry, right, Uh, where where you you can get plugged in. You need to be in a small group where you can develop relationships and connections with other Christians who will both encourage you and who will hold you accountable. Because here's the deal. Here's the deal. Some of you, you're relatively new in the, in the Westbrook world, right? Let me just put a plug in for connectedness. You're relatively new uh, coming to Westbrook. Let me just say something. You this year, 2019, you need to figure out how you can get connected and, 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 and get in a group and get connected in the ministry more than ever before. Because if you don't, if you don't, you're going, to get, you're going to get disillusioned with Westbrook, you're going to get bored with Westbrook, and you're going to look around at the other churches and say, hey, I think the grass is greener over there. And let me tell you something, the grass is not greener over there. Their grass is the same color. And I know a lot of really amazingly great churches in Bolingbrook, they're preaching the same thing I am. And they're just as frustrated with people hopping from one church to the other as I am. All right? And so get connected. If you want to, if you want to find trans- transformation and renewal in the life of the local church, you've got to get connected. You've got to get connected. And so let, me, let that serve as some godly encouragement to you. And don't just pop in and pop out. You know, you get here late, you leave early, you, can't, you, know, you, you blast out of here as fast as you can as soon as the service is over. Let's do this spiritual transformation thing together. And then let's friends and helping them to know Christ as well. T plus HH plus GE equals spiritual growth. And let me remind you, as we close, that we have the mind of Christ. And Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says this, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. We are to have what we already have. And that's not a contradiction, but rather a call to continual, continuing transformation that will move you little by little from caterpillars to be the butterfly that God wants you to be. And it's not going to happen by accident. And it's not going to happen overnight. And it's not going to happen without the Holy Spirit. It happens when we make a personal commitment. It happens when we, with the godly encouragement of other Christians. It happens when we become what God has made us to be. It happens when we behold the glory of Jesus Christ. Time plus healthy habits plus godly encouragement equals spiritual gifts. It equals transformation and renewal. So that's a spiritual encouragement, all right? Let me give you some practical application. Practical encouragement, all right? And I need to be done here, all right? And so just look at your program. Look at this list in your program real fast. It's not up here on the slides. It's in your program. Look at that. These are not end-all ideas. Just, I'm just going to give you some real, you know, real-world, hands-on thoughts to get you started. And we don't have a lot of time for me to elaborate as much as I want to on all of these. So how do you find renewal? How do you find transformation? You want to experience that as the new year begins? Here's the first one you can do. You can take a social media break. Can I get an amen in the room? Okay. 
I, you know what I'm talking about. It happens for all of us that if you're on social media, you see some things that your friends are doing and they look so happy. And you see them, they have pictures of them and their spouse and they're smiling all pretty, you know. And you're thinking, my wife and I, we've been fighting for the last three days. And look at them, Ugh, you know. You see them with their perfect family or whatever, and it just makes you feel like you just don't measure up. You don't add up. Am I right? Okay. Or some friend of yours or former friend of yours makes some statement or writes some little a phrase on social media, and you begin to try to parse it out and figure it out because you believe they're talking about you. Right? So maybe one thing that you can do, you can just begin the year with taking a little break from social media. Secondly, you can get into God's Word. You can memorize Scripture. You can study your Bible. You can take time to listen when you pray. There's some great strength in just reading God's Word on a regular basis. As some of you saw yesterday, if you're on social media and you follow me on social media, I put on my social media that I was so proud of myself. You know why I was proud of myself? Proud of myself yesterday because I finished reading the chronological Bible study, study Bible for 2018. I finished the whole thing. January 1 till yes, I finished the whole thing, read through the whole Bible. And I was so proud of myself, right? And, and there, thank you very much. Thank you. I will receive that. Okay? And I was running around the kitchen going, oh, and I was patting myself on the back, you know. And Christy said, what are you doing? What's going on? I said, I'm so proud of myself. She said, why? I said, because I finished. She said, shut up. I'm five days behind. And then you think, well, wait, that's weird, you know, because pastors, you guys like read the Bible every hour, right? No, man, it's hard. It is hard to be in God's Word. And I go days. Yes, you're a pastor. I'm being real transparent. I, I, like you, I go days without being in God's Word. I go days without, dare I say this? I go days without praying. I know, right? <laughs> Who did that? I'm going to hold you accountable all year long, buddy, okay? In fact, you and me, we're going to read the Bible together this year. I got your cell phone number. I know where you live. I'm coming. I'm going to come. You and me this year, buddy. Godly encouragement. GE, right there, okay? It's, it's, it, come on. Is it not hard? But this is what God wants. So listen, take the time. Take the time. Let's move on. Listen, here's a, here's a good one for some of you. You want transformation and renewal in your life? Capture negative thoughts. When they start to come, you just kick it in the and move it on. Ask the Lord to guard and direct your mind. Recognize the source of self-focused and self-defeating thoughts. Replace self-focused thinking with a God-focused mindset. Rest in the truth. Look up here. Rest in the truth that you are accepted by Jesus Christ. And He delights in you. No matter. So let's make this year the most incredible year that we've had. Why don't you stand Real quickly, I, I just want to, before I pray, I want to encourage you to be with us. Pastor Caleb mentioned it, but you be with us starting next Sunday with this Explore God series, all right? And furthermore, you invite your friends. Do not come to church by yourself. You invite your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors, those who are skeptics, those who are doubting, those who have questions, you invite them. And our answers and our sermons aren't going to just answer it all in one fatal swoop, Okay. <laughs> But it's going to get them in the house of the Lord and it's going to get them thinking. So when you invite your friends, and here's the really cool thing. Churches all across uh, the city are doing this. I don't know, several hundred, two, three, four, five hundred. I don't even know how many. But there's churches, there's all, churches all across this town that's doing it. And what's really cool is we're all, we're all, we're all sharing it together. In fact, in fact, last night I finished, uh, I, I've, I've, I finished writing sermon number one for next Sunday, sermon number two for the week after that, and I sent sermon number one and sermon number two to my good buddy, Pastor Jeremiah Stingle at Living Water Church, and my good friend, Ron Smith at Sanctuary Church. And both of them said, oh God, Mom, thank you so much. Now it'll save me time. I won't have to write a full sermon. <laughs> so we're, we're at least three of us in this town are going to be preaching the exact same sermon. 
And I pray that they share, they write sermon number three and sermon number four so I have a breather and a break, okay? So if you see them, tell them to get, get at it, okay? But you invite your family and friends and let's do this together.